podcast. Twenty one. Is it? No. No way. I'm actually back on the podcast. It's been too long. Did you miss me? Because I miss being here. I miss podcasting. It's weird. It's been too long. It's not been that long, but a lot has happened since my last podcast, which was when, like, July, I think, or June or something. I don't know. So many crazy things have gone on from my holiday to Italy. Um, good, good and bad things have happened along the way. There's so much to get through in one in one podcast. I mean, when I do it every week, it's different. You get into like little subjects or little discussions, but there's so much to talk about. I don't know how long this is gonna be, but yeah, guys, welcome back. Let's roll the intro. Let's get back into the world of podcasting. Welcome back. I'm Luisi Twenty One, and this is my podcast. What's up, Twenty One fam? How you doing? It's a podcast, not a vlog. So if you're tuning in expecting a vlog, it's not a vlog. Welcome to you all. Benvenuti a tutti. Ciao. Ventuma familia. So yeah, I can't wait for you doing. Find a way to listen. Please, because this is... I'm really confident in this. If the camera holds up and does not break for the 18th time. So take it easy, fam. I love you guys. You've been there from the beginning. And if you're just joining now, thank you. Still at old school G, the old school G's been there from the outset, the outset. If not for you, I wouldn't have as many fans as I have now. The technology that came with that, I, I, I'd never done that before, so I taught myself. And lo and behold, here we are. However many, well, how many months, almost a year later, and now podcasting, so it comes full circle, really. And I had no script for what I just told you, literally. I just thought of that. As, as I've been looking at this question, why I started a podcast. That's really the, the story behind it. And yeah, I don't know, rags to riches, no. <laughs> Not quite, I'm still poor. <laughs> oh dear. And now, yeah, today we have more light. So hopefully this video comes out a bit brighter. But yeah, so that's why, probably why. But yeah, like I said, or I haven't said, I did say yesterday, but the camera broke, so yeah. Like I would have said yesterday, uh, there's a lot of YouTubers that I've seen that do the same thing. So, you know, I mean, I'm thinking, why not do it if they do? A lot of podcasters started as vloggers, you know, they have their own vlog, as well as a podcast. Chabelli. Alright guys, yeah, so this is podcast 21 I believe, ironically being Louise 21 back on the podcast. Um, yeah, I can't even remember where I started with these podcasts, like was, they're so different now, like, I, I just got more relaxed with it and just went with it really. At the beginning it was more like, okay let's find some subjects and talk about them and make all different segments of the podcast. But eventually I just thought, what the hell, just talk, that's what the people want to hear. Because um, I was too fixed in that vlog structure. Um, so yeah, this is uh, back to it, the real talk really. Like I was doing on the last few podcasts. Just being real, you know. And one thing that I've been hearing about a lot lately is ableism. Maybe you haven't, maybe you have. Um, basically you've got racism, you've got all the other types of isms. And you've got ableism. On the same level, but no one appreciates it in the same way I mean it's not talked about at the same level but I don't even know exactly what it is but I will be talking about that at some point um, that, that's a big thing that's been on my mind something that never really crosses your mind until someone makes it obvious to you which I've seen a guy on Twitter talking about um, ableism quite a lot or what it means it's still hard to understand um, and it's hard to know when you're a victim of it, but obviously you have to have a disability to suffer from ableism. Um, but then I've realised that myself, as a disabled person, ableism, something like you, you can be self, like I could be guilty of myself, even not knowing, and it could affect my own life. Like, of thinking of my own situation. 
from a you know limit limited point of view, as opposed to same as everyone else. You know, equal equality is what it means really. It's after equality for someone that's different to someone else. You know, but um, I'll get into that later on, or I I might just devote a podcast to it. But yeah, that's been on my mind a bit. But um, it's it's like it's not something that happens between friends really or family. It's more like people outside your group, if you know what I mean. Like random people you see on the street. They make a judgment call and that be ableism in some cases or they make an assumption. Um, but yeah. I don't feel that that way all the time though. I don't feel like it's because someone's able bodied there like against me now. By all means whatever. But, um no, it's it's just certain things. And it's, it doesn't annoy me personally, but when someone else points it out, another disabled person, you make makes you think, oh, I never thought of it that way. And yeah, that's been on my mind recently. We had a uh, loss within my Pajia football community. As you know, a good friend of ours. Um, so that's been difficult, coming back from this lovely holiday and having all this happen. Getting back to football has been really tough. I was there yesterday. We lost both, but um, we have won at Nationals two games. Um, a few weekends back, it was really tough. That was like a week after it happened. So it's been a difficult time, been good and bad. Uh, friends over from Italy and all this, so I'm really excited about that. I've had family over, got more family coming over soon. One of my best friends is actually moving to England from Italy, so I've got all this excitement uh, all mixed together, you know. And that's life. And this last four months, three months, however long I've been away, it's been like that. It's been up and down. No other way to put it. I mean, let's start with the summer. Like, um, I didn't do as many vlogs as I did last summer. Um, I'm talking about before I left. I mean, we had all right weather, didn't we? Not too bad. There were a few really hot days. Some really, some really hot days, like 36 degrees. I was in Camden always, as I still am, always there. I, and the biggest thing from the summer to, in my head, is overcoming this like phobia of buses. It wasn't really a phobia, just like a realization that it is possible to go and play, go to the bus, go places on the bus, if you know what I mean. Uh, for the, the average person, it's easy, but maybe I was a victim of my own ableism, thinking that it's difficult because the ramp might break or there's issues and all this. But I just thought, screw it, just take the risk. And I've been, uh, I'm always going places now, more than I ever have before, without the need of my brother driving me wherever it is, you know, or someone driving me. Even though I can drive, um, physically it's difficult sometimes. So the easiest thing is to get the bus. And you wouldn't really want to go central London. You wouldn't want to drive into central London anyway. And so buses are the other option. So I took that choice, made the decision, and since then I haven't looked back and I go everywhere and some people don't even go that far. Um, like, like talking to people, they're like, wow, you really go that far on the bus? You mad? But I have been and I've overcome that and it's given me so much freedom and it's helped. Um, vlogging as well, vlogging is part of it. So it makes a great vlog. Maybe I've filmed too much of the journey as opposed to the, the destination. But life is about the journey sometimes. Or whatever you do, your, your journey to success. You will enjoy the, enjoy the journey more than when you get there. But yeah, for the vlog style, like, it's been interesting. And I've used those journeys in the vlogs. And maybe I should do like a give advice to other disabled people about public transport. The next thing is trains. And yeah, they're, well, they're a bit more difficult. Because not all underground stations have lifts. Overground can be a bit dodgy. It's got a phone like the day before and tell them to get like a ramp. So it depends. Um, but I've overcome that. And that's a great thing. Something simple, but it wasn't really a phobia, just the, the, the worry of what could go wrong. But why worry? Worrying is not for me, um, or it should, shouldn't be for anyone. Whatever you're going through, 
but it happens. So, yeah, even though the, the some of the buses, or one of the ramps actually broke, not broke, but it, went, it got stuck. That's about it, it's been good other than that. And you see people, you meet people, on every journey is different. And you see how different, that the, the different people that live in London, you know, the mix of cultures in different areas, and that we all mix together, you know. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm gonna be using the bus a lot more, basically. And that was so. That was before I went to Italy. Um, got me in the, in the high spirits. Like, I was in a good mood, ready for Italy, you know. And it only got better in Italy. Like, hot weather, of course. Not as many days at the beach as you would like, or I would have liked. Uh, but hot weather was a constant in Italy. It always is. Well. Well, we go anyway. So yeah, of course, last year we had two weddings be at the beginning and the end of the holiday. This time we didn't, it was just a bit more freedom, a bit shorter holiday because of my brother's work. He couldn't take that much time off um, as opposed to with his other job or when he was at college or school uh, where you get, you get so much time off. Um, so that was difficult, but we made a great time out of a short holiday. Well, three weeks isn't really short. It was less than what we normally do. It was a bit less than three weeks, maybe. But yeah, it's a bit less than what we normally do. So we're like, oh, it's going to be crap. It's going to be a short holiday. But it actually wasn't. Because knowing that, we made the most of it more. And I spent a lot of time in that other village in the mountains with my mum's side of the family and my, my all my good friends that I have there uh, in a town called Candida which is unique and you've got to be from there to understand it. If you go there as a tourist, you won't get it. Uh, but us, because you know, we've got fa we're connected by family, so we're, we're, we're like, it's like a, another hometown. And even where my dad's from, Canals, of course, that even more so. Well, maybe not, I don't know. It's hard to say which town I prefer, because Canals is near the sea, it's flat, it's more open, Kind of, there's a small mountain village, but yeah, different styles, different cities, not a city. I mean, towns. Barely, they're barely towns, but yeah, you know what I mean. Different people too. It's like an hour's drive, and people change. It's strange. Different cult, same country, but different cultures, and we embrace both of them, and and we embrace Italy because it is homeland for me really uh, even though I'm born here all that you know I love Italy too it's in the DNA it's in the blood so you, you can't deny that and some people there will be like oh yeah like 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 friends of friends or mutual friends be like yeah but you're born in England you're English it's like yeah but this blood is Italian you don't get it they don't seem to get it that my parents are so it makes me Italian but yet, a lot of people would say they're English, even if they're born here, but maybe their parents aren't. Or British. Whatever you want to say, I don't know. After Brexit, who knows. Um, but yeah, no, I say I'm Italian. But then when I go there, I feel a bit English. And then when I come here, I feel Italian. I'm the Italian one, you know what I mean? Yeah. There, I'm like the British kid. But then again, you get a lot of attention for that too. Oh, England, oh yeah, I speak a bit of English. They speak like two words of English. Um, but one thing I learned is that you meet so many people like of my age, a bit younger, a bit older, different stages in their lives, and you you learn a lot about like life in that sense. Like I see people younger than me who are ready to go off to uni. A friend of mine who's like what he's twenty one, and he's saying he's going to uni late. That's not late, really, is it? I don't know. I think I was about twenty one when I started uni. Um, but yeah, he was like, oh yeah, I messed about when I was younger, so, you know, I'm going to try uni, you know. Some people were like, just desperate to get out of Italy, whether it's studying or working or whatever. Um, and they just want to get a new beginning in some cases. Because some people just get fed up. And because there is a bigger town, they kind of called Avellino, which is, well, next to that, not next to it, after that you would get Napoli, basically. It's not on uh, the same size, but 
it's more of a city compared to Candida anyway. So people emigrate there, well, not emigrate, but move there, you know, it's like down the road. People move there, it's like moving from here, where I live now to central London. So people will move there, try and start a life, or move north or move to England, or in one of my cousin's case, Germany, to find a job or study or, you know. And a friend of mine, the friend of mine who's moving here, um, in her case, to study. And it's a difficult time because of Brexit, but if you've got that motivation to make something of yourself and not, you know, just waste your time. Nothing wrong with, um, you know, staying in the same place you're born, but like you've got to progress and leaving and then coming back will make you appreciate it more. Um, like anyone who is born in Italy and moves here, they love Italy more than the Italians do in Italy and then people in Italy want to move and then we want to go back and all this but I know my quality of life in some sense like financially might be better here and all, all the benefits I get and the NHS and all that it's better off here I'm better off here in that sense um, but I'd love to live in Italy too because the food you know not you know uh, uh, not always the people but the people in general, you know, uh, it's different. Not better, but different. Like, there's ups and downs to both places. Like here, the weather, you know, obviously. Italians come here and they're freezing, but I'm kind of used to it. But with me, I don't like the cold. That's what makes me feel Italian. And I'm moaning about the cold. But there, they're cold if it's like 20 degrees. Um, and I'm just sad that it's once a year. Uh, maybe, maybe like last year at Easter we'll go again we'll have relatives here at Christmas but yeah I just really appreciate it appreciated it more this year just got into that holiday mode not holiday mode but like with my friends and family there cousins and they've got so many friends and just had some really good conversations and like talks with people and like catching up and all that like you do uh, but in that in this small town, funny enough, there's fair few like Anglo Italians like me, or like well, like my mum, like parents that are Italian and moved to England with kids. I had kids in England, you know, and then their kids, which are like my age, so it's weird. People they don't even see in England, uh, but we see them there once a year. And then like between them and the locals, it's quite funny. And then you got a whole load of relatives from America, and random people that come out from America too they're like connected to the family and all that friends you know it's weird a lot of uh, cousins and stuff all of different ages some of my mum's cousins too some of them that are like their cousins but cousins with my mum but they're like older they're like my granddad's age <laughs> so it's all mixed up but it's fun and that's the thing about town like so many different age groups and different types of people come together like me and my brother from England my other friend from like Verona and then my other friend who lives there you know all these different people mixed together from England from all over the world to this small town and I've said it before on like one of my vlogs actually like it brings people together where the rest of the year won't see them but for that one time of the year we'll go there and it will connect everyone they come from miles away you know and family new and old <laughs> which I've got met many, you know, like too, too many to count. Some are like, you haven't even met before, you're like, who are you? But you can't say that, you've got to pretend you remember them. Oh, hi, yeah, I remember you from this and that occasion. And they have like some story about you when you were a kid. I remember you when you did, did whatever and something happened and, you know, and so on. You're like, what? Yeah. You like pretend you remember, oh, yeah. All this, it's just like trying to be polite. <laughs> and not just say, do I know you? That's the risk, I mean, when I was younger, it was strange. I found it weird, that, like random people that I wouldn't even know, but somehow they knew me because they knew my granddad or my mum or something. Uh, but we're just always out drinking. And we go there like to like 5 a.m. 4 a.m. is the average. One day we made it to about 8 a.m. Cause that's like a tradition every year to stay up, stay up and see the sunrise. As you know, if you've been following any podcasts, any vlogs I've been doing and I've been doing a fair few vlogs when I was in Italy as well 
probably not to the best of my ability because you live in the moment, you know. And like that, though, the vlogs I did there, uh, they're memories now, you know. And I got them saved. <laughs> so if I forget, I can't forget. It's all on tape. <laughs> well, some stuff would incriminate me, so I haven't put it in any of the vlogs and some stuff. I can't even talk about because it, it might incriminate other people. Not incriminate, but like, you don't want to say stuff that other people maybe don't want other people knowing. Or like, yeah, anyway, yeah. It's a long story. But every year it's great. I mean, last year was great. Uh, this was just as good, if not better. A bit different, you always reminisce. But at the same time, you make new memories. And you're up till 5 a.m. playing guitar. My uncle, one of my mum's cousins, just, we're all young and there's these older geezers like trying to stay up late with us early. They're up to like 6 a.m. every day. One of my cousins anyway. You know, there's people that once a year they live for this place. And so do I, to be honest. And I find myself not wanting to go back to my dad's town so much. Because it's a bit more open. Uh, got more cousins and friends, I would say. People a bit different, I don't know. I've got with my older cousin. Um, so it's, it's different. But I made friends there too with uh, my, one of my cousins, Fabio, who lives here. He's got a lot of friends in Italy. And having met them from last year and the year before, they kind of know me pretty well now. So, you know, we're on like, WhatsApp terms. So it's pretty good. One of them lives in Germany and all this. And like Candida, the same thing. People are leaving to find their life, to start their life, to make something of it, to get out of this place. And those who can't find jobs or work or are fed up of studying or want to study, they're going to, leave, they're going to leave for somewhere. Whether it be another part of Italy, which a lot of them even there do. You know, they're people older than me, like 28, 29. Early 30s, some of them, and even younger, some younger as well. It's that obsession with, I don't know, leaving and then coming back. They all want to leave, they're fed up, like there's no young people left. There's no one to interact with apart from the same people. Everyone knows everyone, so everyone ends up chatting shit about everyone, ironically. And like they'll be talking about each other behind their backs. Certain people, anyway, not everyone. Um, but that's just that's just it, isn't it? And here you've got so many different people you could meet. You won't meet the same person twice. But there you will, and you're like, hold on, this is just like the same thing. Every night going out drinking and coming back. There's one bar in Canosa. In my dad's town, this is. I'm, I'm jumping between places here. But yeah, I found myself not wanting to go back to stay in the ma this mountain village, town, whatever it is. And just be there with, not even necessarily family, but all the good friends I have there. Got a lot of friends there. Which is weird, like, I felt guilty um, for my other family in the other town. Because I can't split the time. Because we didn't have that much time to split up, really. But we spent more time in Candida, probably. Like, more than a week. And it was great. I mean, we didn't get to go to the beach. It's basically get up late eat around three, sleep again, and then get up and go out in the evening till the early morning. Some days we went out like here and there, my parents went out with my uncle and my their cousins to Napoli and places like that. I could not be bothered, I was in bed because the night before I was up till 5 a.m. drinking so much Jägermeister, it was coming out my ears, it was good, it was too good burning the candle at both ends. It's good or not good. I mean, it age, that ages you, that's what... you got to look back and go, oh yeah, that's why I got that grey hair. That's why I got that first grey hair. You know, it ages you. I must have aged a lot in a week and then recovered. Been recovering ever since. <laughs> yeah, I mean... We don't... We, we kind of do overdo it. I can't say we're not drinkers, but we are. My brother with his gin one night, he was on his fifth. He's just standing behind me like... Like looking into the distance, like dazed as hell, like didn't know what was going on, just swaying back and forward, trying to hold on to his drink. And then me there with my little glass of Jägermeister with ice. One person passes it to me, I drink, obviously drinking from the straw. I'm drinking it, and another, another person comes along, passing me the same drink. I was like, I just had some, I can't down the whole thing. 
into one part, it's like, screw it. It's going to down this whole Jägermeister. And it's not good. It's not good to drink that much, but it's fun. We don't do it every day, you know what I mean? But when we do, God, it just the company you're in, I guess. But it's not like you feel the need, the need to as such. Because we have fun whether we're sober or not. But it helps, you know, it adds a bit to it. And then we go down to Avelina with my other cousin. Um, and just hang out with her friends. Another group of friends that are like in their 20s, you know. A bit younger though in this case. Like different stage of their lives. Like only just realising that where they are is is not the place for them to stay. And they need to progress or, you know, do something. You know, they're at that age. But there they're already smoking and drinking and well drinking comes naturally there but smoking as well from a younger age and different kind of people to to where my dad's from in Canosa which is Puglia which is near the sea and Avelino or Candida that's more in the mountains like the different kind of people like I said oh I got a message can't answer that now I'm busy but yeah so many different people that I met like mutual through friends and cousins, like mutual friends of theirs and stuff. And you hear all these stories and you, you just think, you know, whatever you do, you're going to make mistakes and you're going to learn and you're going to do good things and you're going to do not so good things. Like fail, failure is inevitable, it's how you react to it, all this. Um, you know, and they've got different stories and the main thing is, like, getting out of that place. <laughs> That's what they all want to do. But half of them are still there. Some people are just lazy. But some people do have that ambition. And a good friend of mine in Candida, he, um, he was in Liverpool for two, two years. So with him, we were having a good conversation. Half of it in English. He speaks really good English. Um, but yeah, some people were not so clued up about leaving and getting out of the country and stuff. It's not like they, they're hating everything about their life. It's more like there's more. There's always more. As human nature, you want more, more than you've got, and you know you can get get that if you change something. But people, a lot of people are scared of change. So one of my cousins, I said to her, "So excited about moving to Germany and all this?" She's like, "Yes, I know." Like, and to me, I'd, I'd be all excited, more excited. But you realise that when you're twenty something, you don't know what you do. Like, don't necessarily know. What what when you do something, what's going to happen from that? You don't have any idea, for example. And we've experienced that understanding comes, but still, fear of the unknown. But change is good. But then, it's human nature to not like change, and to get comfortable in the situation. And my problem is with these holidays, is that I expect certain things, and it doesn't turn out that way, and then it gets on my nerves. But it shouldn't. It, it like gets me down, but like why? Just go with the flow, you know. Whatever happens, happens. And we always have fun at the end of it, but when you try and force the fun, or you know, over, you overdo it and then it doesn't work. It's got to be relaxed and like let it happen. Where whatever fun you're gonna have, you will will be had or whatever. My concern some nights was just like, are we gonna enjoy this or not? Better make the most of this because it's short. Like life, like this, this holiday was like that. And so much fun and banter and music. A lot of music. <laughs> Guitar playing. And yeah, it's just... We make memories forever in these cases. And the last two or three years it's been on that level. In the, in the past when I was younger it was just like sitting around with family like doing nothing. Eating was good, but I mean... And it's another level, like, being out with friends and stuff. But I always feel guilty for my family, that they want me to be with them, but, like... My voice is going. I need a drink. Jeez. I forgot what it does to you podcasting. It just makes your voice disappear. Until you've got nothing left. And there was a bit of romance with my brother, but that, I don't even know. What happened there just didn't work out with a friend of my cousin's. Like, he was so excited and he was so happy, and then 
within 24 hours that had all gone. I was happy for him as well. And it was, it was just like a funny story that we'll look back on, but I don't even know the whole story. And yeah, because I wasn't with him at that point, I stayed in the village and he went down to the tower to Avelino with my other cousin. Um, I'm sure you're getting confused by all these places I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, it's just a drink fest this holiday. Didn't visit that many places. Like when we go, it's just you know, it's not like a tourist holiday. It's like you become one of the locals, <laughs> and you know we're famous there. I mean, because in Canada, like it's my granddad's town. You know, he was born there. My grandma was born near there, and generations of families are from there. Like our family, and my granddad is one of twelve. So like all his the relatives of his that are left like of his siblings like their kids and their grandkids and their great grandkids you know cousins of ours and stuff so we're pretty famous around there and everyone knows us um, all the local bar owners and stuff well, there's only two bars really and there was a big concert this famous singer Italian singer Robbie whatever it was Facchinetti or something Not I'm not a fan of his but Robbie Facchinetti was there um, he's from a famous Italian band but anyway he was singing some of his songs and though we didn't like the concert me and my friends we just had more fun than ever like pretending like like even though you know one of those bands where you know the songs but like you, they get on your nerves because like your parents like them but you know all the words anyway because they've been singing to you as kids like so it, it was one of them and we were like laughing our heads off because while he was supposed to come on the, the Tuesday he came on the Friday of that week because um, he was ill apparently because he's about he's about 78 or something he's quite old 75 or I don't know but he's in his 70s anyway so yeah that was funny and you, it's in the vlog it's in, the, in my intro from Italy one part of the intro anyway but I always change my vlog intros that's the thing um, so yeah that was just too much to, to talk about I feel like I'm forgetting some stories as well. I don't want to incriminate other people, but yeah. One of my other cousins, my other, if I can speak, one of my other cousins that was with us met a friend of another cousin of ours. And yeah, she'd broken up with her boyfriend, I think, like two days before. And then there was another friend of mutual friend that was there, mutual friend of my cousin. And the friend of hers, um, a, ge a geezer obviously, a bloke, and then by the end of the evening they end up, they're locking lips, you know what I mean, and my other cousin's just like, damn, I was going to try it, try and get a date or something, but this guy's out, already got his tongue down their throat, you know, what am I going to do, so that was depressing for him, but like, oh, plenty of fish, fish in the sea, you know, it's not, not the last, not the first, <laughs> and it was just that moment, like, consoling him, like, so, oh damn, what are the chances, man? And then the other, the other two are still walking with us. They were walking down the street. It was like a pedestrianised street. And they're like a bit further ahead, just going at it. Kind of, well... They've got their arms around each other, you know. Um, and then the next day, it's like... She's not with the guy anymore. And like, what was that about, then? Like, what is wrong? Like, you're... It's a friend of my cousin who's, like, older. She's, like, 32 or something. And, like... She's going with some 20-something geezer. And my other cousin's like, what are you doing? Like, get your head sorted at that age. So, surely by that age you know what you're doing. And, you know, two days after you've broken up with your boyfriend, you're not going to be at it again. Straight away, come on. I mean, make make some good decisions here, come on. So that was funny at the time. Uh, but fair play to her, whatever. Do what you got to do. You want to be happy, that's it. Um... So yeah, it was a short-lived holiday, but so great. So many memories I can't even rem remember, but they're, they're there. It's all blurred. <laughs> too much drink. And too much food. Um, but yeah, I gained a lot of weight, which is good. Which I've been trying to do since my last hospital visit. From like last year. I mean, compared to last year, when I got back from Italy, I was in better shape this year, as you say. Physically, yeah, I mean... I, since last year I gained five kilos, so that's a start. I mean that that proves it. And this holiday helped. So last year I was ill before I went. 
when I got ill out there, and you know, I was ill when I got back, and obviously, Grandma passed away last year, so that was really tense, like, a few months last year, around September, and then we got back, and of course, more loss to deal with around September, the beginning of September, always the case, from the, the highs as the lows, but la and last year, that was the thing, it was my grandma, and yeah, she lives in Italy, but still, it was difficult, of course, family, but um, in, in this case, with the loss this year, it was a friend of ours that we saw almost every week at football, you know, my coach, so it was even worse, the, 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 the grief, even though it was my grandma last year, you know, I didn't see her, I saw her once a year, and of course I felt that loss when we went to Canada this year, to my dad's town, we passed my grandma's flat, her balcony, where she she would be out watering her plants all the time, or sleeping in a in a garden chair. Um, so that was difficult, and seeing my family, some of which I hadn't seen since I left Italy last year, and of course my grandma died a week later. So that was difficult to have seen them after that year. Of course, some of my family I saw in in January they came over, and for Easter we went to Milan. So saw some of the family, but not all of them. So it was just really difficult in that sense. And of course, towards the end of the holiday, after all the excitement, we um, thought we'd go to the cemetery and see where my grandma was buried. And yeah, that, that was as you'd, as you'd expect. Cemeteries there, yeah, they really do them up nice. How nice can the cemetery be? But like, people really go all out for, for their, their lost loved ones. It's amazing. Um, and so yeah, just saw her there and it was like, difficult, but like, I don't know, I couldn't really put it into words. It makes you like appreciate life, I think I better make something of my life, so when I get to that age, you know, people are going to treat me like that, you know, and not everyone's so lucky, but in Italy when you've got family, that's what happens, almost everyone is lucky enough to. But here it's not the same. Some people haven't got any family and they're reliant on people they pay to look after them and stuff. And you know, it's just hard to, to, to imagine from the life I've come from or the life I'm part of being Italian, you know, these big families, always people helping you, always cousins and relatives. So, and she had an abundance of those. <laughs> 18 nep um, grandkids, like me and my cousins seven kids, you know, what, what a life. Um, and of course, she was alone herself in that sense, because my granddad died many years ago. So she'd been through her own battles in that sense. And physically she was, wasn't as, as well as she used to be. I had a few problems here and there, but that's life. I mean, with age it happens. And it makes you appreciate what you've got. Youth, you know, anything like that to make the most of it, to use the time you got while you can, you know. And then this year, it all happened again, and it was it all back to square one with the grief, you know. Just getting over it after a year. But I don't know, you never get over it, but you know what I mean. Just getting through it after a year, after me getting ill after that as a result. Um, and yeah, it, everything was getting better, good until this bad news this year and it's just been like a whirlwind like torn everyone's life apart in, in one in one sense of the word and the funeral was difficult because I mean I wasn't at my grandma's funeral last year because that was in Italy and we just got back my parents were but I wasn't so this really I don't know made me think about that day as well how difficult that would have been but this was difficult don't get me wrong one of, probably one of the hardest things to do, to go through. And that first training session back, seeing my mate, knowing what they, as a family, what they've been through. It wasn't easy, and like, the memories you have with that person, you just gotta remember the good stuff. Because it's all good stuff, that's the thing. Even with my grandma, and there was no guilt or anything, there was guilt, but that's natural with grieving, but there was no actual guilt. That I felt it was all good memories with these people be it my grandma or my ex-coach. 
So, yeah, whoever it is, I mean, they don't have to be family, but if they're close to you and you lose them, you know, it's even, even harder sometimes. Because it's someone you see every week. It doesn't matter who they are, family or not. Because you've got family, but some people, even if they're not family, they will be, if you know what I mean. And some people that are family might not be actually that close to you, or you might not feel close to them. It's like whoever it is, you know. The pe loyalty is family, really. Bloods too, but not always. Sometimes your friends are m much closer. You might tell them things you wouldn't tell your family. Um, but yeah, I thought it, it wasn't as hard losing it when you lose a friend, but it's, if not worse. Um, but yeah, there's so many people at the funeral, our whole team, you know. And that same week I was in hospital for my sleep study, getting all my checks. But I had the good news that I gained five kilos and an all round great visit and my health was good. So it's difficult, like these ups and downs. You've got that, I'm going from a hospital to a funeral. The, the two least nice places, <laughs> if you know what I mean. And I was there both both places in one day, ironically. Um, but yeah, it was a difficult time. It's been difficult ever since. But it's been a few weeks now. Um, but every now and then just think about it and like, it's hard to believe still. It's a shock when someone's that young. You know, I mean, my grandma, she got to a certain age, she was 81, she could have lived longer, but it's not like she lived a short life in that sense. And it was a very fulfilled life, raising seven kids and that many grandkids. You know, strong woman, so, in that sense, it's when someone's old, it's like, well, they lived a great life, you know. When someone's, like, within their 50s or something, yeah, come on, it's too young and it's hard to comprehend because there's so much more, like, so many more years. Um, but yeah. So from that massive high of Italy, we had this to deal with and back to football, but I've still been going on trips around London, trying to deal with life <laughs> and trying to put a smile on, you know what I mean? I'm not saying, I'm not on the level of um, the Joker, you know, I've seen that film. And yeah, that that's crazy. Yeah, I'll talk about that in a bit. But <laughs> yeah, so just even when things are difficult, you gotta you gotta find a way to get through it. Smile, you know. Like the Nat King Cole song. Can't remember the lyrics, but smile is the song. Um, and you do through difficult things. Remember the good stuff, like I said already. And yeah, I've been back at football since then. We started nationals. We lost the two on that Saturday. After the minute applause for Barry, for our coach. Um, so that was difficult. We lost both of them at four, three one, and then six one. Then the Sunday we won both one nil. The last game we won one nil in the last minute. Um, and one of our newer players scored, so it was great. And the, the celebration I did was in memory of our coach and friend, you know. I just went crazy, I did Because through the, both these losses in the last two years, I haven't cried. I've been like, sad and stuff and depressed, but I haven't cried. And But this celebration was a joy, obviously joyous moment, but it was in memory of someone great, you know. A tribute, if, if you like. So that, all that emotion came out in that celebration you know when someone scores it, how they, so I just went extra crazy. Did a couple of donuts and when they crashed into every teammate, <laughs> without trying to hurt them of course. Uh, that was quite funny. Uh, but yeah, and it was like an up and down weekend. Considering what we'd all been through, it's a huge effort to win those two. And what we'd been through, obviously did affect us on the Saturday, but the Sunday we won both. And that was what we came there to do. Yeah, the Sunday didn't go too well, but it's a new league, it's a tough league, championship this year, many more teams, and we're going to fight in memory of Barry, because that's what we always did, we always fought to the end, win or lose, you know, happy when you win, sad when you lose, and more recently, 
I had my cousin over from America, um, and that was really fun because I got to see my first ever NFL game at the new Spurs stadium with my, my cousin's husband, a Raiders fan. And so now I'm a Raiders fan. I do have a Tom Brady jersey, but like I said in, in the vlog, I'm a Raiders fan, I'm part of the Raider Nation. And thank you to those who joined or subscribed as a result of being part of the Raider Nation. Um, enjoy many more of my videos and keep keep supporting the Raider Nation because uh, that's what I'm going to do and I'm going to hopefully see another game of theirs at some point in America maybe this time in Vegas where they're building a new stadium you never know but Tottenham Hotspur put on a great show for NFL it was NFL that, again there last weekend or this weekend just gone it's an amazing sport and now I love it since getting the game Madden back in July yeah July I've been loving the sport and learning all the, the names of different plays and players and tactics and all that and the rules um, so I do understand the sport that's the first thing because I thought if I'm going to go to this game I've got to know the rules and what they're talking about and who's winning and who's losing and what can win you the game and what can't and vice versa so I really love that and like it's an amazing sport a bit simpler than normal football but yeah it's just motivational to watch and when someone gets tackled or when someone makes a good run and gets a touchdown anything like that is crazy or an interception or when it goes from defence to attack someone fumbles the ball you know it's tense, I mean, when you're supporting a team, you want your team to succeed, but it's a very back and forth sport, very stop start to, can change within a split of a night, split second, you know, in the blink of an eye it can change, but there's so many adverts, like stopping every five minutes, waiting to kick off, because the advert was playing, so waiting, to the advert to, waiting for the advert to stop and then play, all this is crazy, and of course Raiders won, what an amazing game, like nobody thought they would nobody gave them a chance, even my cousin and her husband, they were both said like, nah they're going to lose, they're an average team, the Chicago Bears will beat them, but no they didn't, no they didn't and I'm not going to make this an NFL channel because I didn't make it a football channel when I could have or anything particular, keep it general but I do love NFL now and players like Michelle Lynch from the past at the Raiders, um, Antonio Brown's been all over the news. He was at the Patriots most recently, but he was at the Raiders a few years back, and the Pittsburgh Steelers. But I was learning about him, and then all this happened, which is controversy, and now he doesn't play anymore. So one of my favourite players doesn't actually play anymore because of all this controversy surrounding him. And he was at the Patriots too. Um, had he stayed there, maybe I would still choose to support them but yeah now I actually get the sport the Raiders and my team because they fought tooth and nail like they, they took the lead early I mean yeah they went behind but then they got it back in the end to put things right and win the game literally at the end though that last touchdown by Josh Jacobs what a player a new player to their team drafted like this season or last season April yeah with that I don't know but yeah, so he's a new player and he, he just, he won it for them, so. And it was in London, amazing. So that was a great day out, great thing to be part of. And I'll be back soon at, at the Hotspur Stadium or at Wembley to watch NFL. But it has to be the Raiders. Can't be any random team, really. Maybe if the Patriots come, but like, certain teams that I really like, certain players, you know, you follow players. Odell Beckham, obviously, is at Cleveland Browns now. He was at New York Giants for years. New York Giants have gone downhill. But even though Beckham's at Cleveland, they're not too good at the moment. Even though they've got players like Landry and Mayfield, though I don't rate Mayfield as a quarterback that much on the level of Rodgers or Brady or Mahomes or any of them, or Russell Wilson. Um, but yeah, enough NFL talk. Otherwise, I'm just gonna, some of you are just going to get confused and you're just going to get so bored and just switch this off. 
but I don't know how long this podcast even is at the moment. Could be at least an hour. But I've got my Raider Nation flag up behind you. Um, and yeah, I've started doing live streams again, as, you, as you've seen. So I'm back into the swing of things, out of holiday mode completely, um, which happened pretty quickly actually. Uh, back into the video, I've been ed I was editing the holiday videos for about two weeks after my holiday, trying to get them all out and done nicely. Even though the filming weren't too good, I thought I had more than I did. Well, didn't realise I had that much content, but thought I could make more vlogs out of them. But yeah, amazing. And still, I don't feel I'm making vlogs in the same capacity that I used to. But I tried to shorten the length of them, make them no le no more than like eight, eight, nine minutes, ten minutes at the max, because before they were 15, 20 minutes. 15, 20 minutes is too long, way too long. So yeah, I reduced that, and sometimes if they're too long, I just divide it into two videos, part one, part two, simple. Took that advice from a good friend of mine. So thanks, Ryan. Um, so yeah, I mean, things are running up. And hopefully I'm going to get my friend over, who's over from Italy this week, sorting out all her like, things for when she moves in January to England. So yeah, that's exciting times. I'm going to hang out with her soon. Uh, even though we met up in Camden the other day. Camden, yes, I know, I love Camden. If you didn't already realise. <laughs> but I'm telling you guys, I'm, this mic is not that good. That's such a random thing, but I've been thinking that all day. While I've been talking, you're like, I hate this mic. And I'm worried that from where I am now, in this position, it's not loud enough. But, yeah, don't buy a Yeti mic, whatever you do. I read the reviews, they were good. Saw a YouTube video, they were good. Turns out they're not good mics, though. Because I've, I've been using it for, like, a year now. It's really not that good. <laughs> Maybe, unless I'm closer to it, but... Who, who cares, right? I mean, the one I had before was 20 quid. And that seemed to be just as good. I might revert back to it or just trade this one in, you know. Sell it, see how much I get for it. And buy an actual good one, maybe. Because I've got so much technology I don't use. So many things I don't even use. But for this, I've still got the box, so. That's why you keep the box. Don't throw away nothing. But yeah. So I'm always ever, forever making memories. Yesterday we were at regionals, we lost 2-0 and 3-2 though the game we lost 3-2 we almost won so we were in the lead like twice one of them frustrating games it was a bit like an NFL game back and forward but um, they were both Premier League sides in the regionals so that was difficult because I really thought we'd have beaten Bournemouth and I scored against them in the past but yeah so that was a strange day and yeah I think that takes us to the end of this podcast, kind of. I'll, I'll talk more recently about what's going on. Um, but yeah, I want to thank you guys. This has been Podcast 21. Is it? I don't know. I don't know which one it is, but I'm back. Series 2, let's say. I'm not going to name it as a series, but yeah. There you go. I want to thank you guys for watching, for listening, and you know, being part of the channel, those new old subscribers, whoever you are, thank you, good evening, good night, good morning, good day, wherever you're watching this, buenas dias, ciao, arrivederci, whatever you want to call it, um, yeah, take it easy fam, and I'll see you real soon, on the next vlog, but of course, on the next podcast, peace. <laughs>